I'm going to share with you some tips and tools to ensure that you get a proper deep latch while breastfeeding your baby that will make your breastfeeding journey less painful and more comfortable for you. Hey, it's Morgan. Welcome to the Passable Parent Channel. I've been a pediatric nurse for the past 10 years specializing in early childhood development, and I'm also a mom. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And make sure to comment down below if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. One of the most common obstacles for new moms trying to breastfeed is figuring out how to get a good latch. If you're watching this video, you're either a pregnant mama hoping to prepare yourself for your breastfeeding journey ahead, a mama who is attempting to breastfeed but is feeling discomfort and maybe discouraged and unsure how to get that proper latch, or a partner wanting to help your breastfeeding mama overcome this obstacle. You've come to the right place, and by the end of this video, you will have the tips and tools to try again and get that proper latch. Let's start off with the basics of a good latch versus a bad latch. If your baby is latching onto more than just your nipple, you probably have a good latch. Your baby should be latching onto your entire nipple plus some of the surrounding areola, which is the darker area of your breast that surrounds your nipple. So the areola is this circle here and your nipple is this part of the breast. Your areola is that circle around your nipple. The amount of your areola that your baby takes in depends on the size of your nipples and the size of your areola. In general, your newborn should have your entire nipple and approximately one inch or more of your areola in their mouth. Your baby's lips should be turned out or look like a fish's lips or a duck's and flat against your breast. And your child's chin and nose should be touching your breast. You should not be experiencing pain throughout the entire nursing session. First time moms, this can be really confusing when people tell you this because it's normal to experience pain and discomfort, especially in the beginning of a nursing session when breastfeeding isn't something that you're used to, but this pain and discomfort should not continue for the entire nursing session. Your baby should empty the breast easily, meaning that your breast will start off large and full, and as your baby empties the breast, they will become smaller and softer. Your baby should be gaining weight per your pediatrician's guidelines. Your baby also should be wetting enough wet diapers per day. And finally, if your child seems happy and satisfied after breastfeeding, you likely have a good latch. Moving on to some signs of a bad latch. Some signs of a bad latch are that you have sore nipples and are experiencing pain throughout the entire nursing session, not just in those initial few minutes. Your baby might be sucking in their cheeks as they try to breastfeed. You should not be seeing them sucking in their cheeks. Your baby also might not have their lips out like a fish, which we talked about earlier with a good latch. And you can see that they have their lips tucked in and under instead. Their lips should be out. You might also hear a clicking or smacking noises as your little one tries to suck, which means that their suction or seal of the breast is breaking. Your nipples are probably sore and breastfeeding is becoming more and more painful as time goes on. That's a confusing one for first time moms as well because a lot of times we're just not used to this breastfeeding so your nipples might be sore even if you have a good latch but it shouldn't be getting more painful as time goes on. You may have cracked or bleeding nipples which is a sign of baby not getting that deep enough latch so a lot more pulling and tugging is happening at the nipple. Your baby might unlatch and leave a pointy nipple, not like the shape it started out as, which indicates that baby is not latched deep enough and is actually pulling at the nipple instead of having their mouth also around that areola like we talked about. Another sign of a bad latch is that when your baby unlatches, there's discoloration to the nipple. Your nipples will start off their regular color, but then when baby unlatches, you might notice some white areas. This could mean that your baby is not latched properly and is cutting off blood flow to those white spots that you see on the nipple, and you will feel stinging and uncomfortableness. When you have a bad latch, many times it leaves baby fussy because they are still hungry or they may be swallowing some extra air, which makes them gassy. If you have a proper good latch, your baby will be satisfied and maybe even sleepy with that nice full feeling after the session. If your baby seems fussy, this is a red flag of a poor latch. So let's talk about why you're here and how you can get a good latch for your baby. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you're feeding your baby at the right time. 
Your baby's feeding cues might include increased eye contact, head bobs, rooting or searching for the breast, sucking motions with the mouth, and they may be more alert and active. If you wait too long and don't respond to these hunger cues, your baby will become upset and fussy, and you'll have to calm them down before you can breastfeed, which will make it much harder to get that good latch. With time, you will start to get better and better at being able to read your baby's cues and understand them. In the first few months with a newborn baby, you may need to wake them for a feeding. Newborn babies need to eat every two to three hours. My next tip for you is that you're going to want to find the right position that works for you. I'm going to show you some different positions and it's really just trial and error for what is going to work best for you. Make sure that whatever position you try, you are in a comfortable place, relax your shoulders, get comfortable and use pillows to help support your arms. I see so many mamas trying to breastfeed in uncomfortable positions with locked, stiff shoulders. Try to relax your body. Here are some positions for you to try. So a lot of the positions we're gonna go over today are best with a breastfeeding pillow. And as I've talked about in many other of my videos, my absolute favorite breastfeeding pillow, and I can't recommend it enough, I buy it for most expecting moms who plan to breastfeed whenever I get invited to their showers, whether it is or isn't already on their registry, is the My Breast Friend pillow. This was a game changer for me. This helped me so much in my breastfeeding journey. And for months, I didn't go anywhere without it. So I can't recommend this pillow enough. It really helped me. I like this so much better than the Boppy for breastfeeding because it's completely adjustable and you can adjust it for, this, for your own size. This part is Velcro and moves and it just makes breastfeeding so much easier and so much more comfortable. And I'll make sure to link this My Breast Friend pillow in the description box below for you if you wanna check it out. So the first position I'm going to teach you today is called the football hold. This position is definitely easiest with a breastfeeding pillow. Now, if you don't have a breastfeeding pillow, that's okay. Most people have different pillows on their sofas, so I recommend taking about two of those pillows and placing them underneath of you, whichever side you're going to start with. Place those two to three pillows on top of whatever knee it is that you're gonna start with, whichever side of your body. You're going to want to place your baby so that their stomach is along your side and their feet are facing your back. Support baby with your arm running along their back and your hand is supporting their head. This position is also really great for after a C-section because it doesn't put a lot of pressure on your abdominal area. It kind of removes that pressure and the weight of your baby and, and puts it onto your side. This is a great position. It's a great position for moms trying to figure out breastfeeding because you can actually see your nipple and you can see your baby's nose and mouth. So this is a great way to check to make sure that you have a deep latch because it's more everything is more visible in this position. The next position I'm going to talk to you about is actually the most common position. It's called the cradle hold. Bring baby across your belly so that their belly is facing your belly and they're being supported with your arm. Always keep baby's belly facing your belly. So baby's belly, in no matter what position, should always be facing their food. If you have larger breasts, it can be really helpful to try rolling up a burp cloth or even a swaddle blanket and putting it underneath your breast to hold it up a little bit more. And you also can support baby's head and you should be supporting baby's head with your hands and you take your hand in a C shape and just place it right behind their neck, support that head and neck always. And then the back again is being supported with your forearm. The next position I wanna to talk to you about is called the cross cradle hold. This position is really helpful for preemies, newborns, or babies that are having trouble latching. This cross cradle position is very helpful and it's similar to the cradle position, but you support your baby's back with your arm again and make that C shape with your hand to support the head and neck. And with your other hand, you actually can be holding your breast and you wanna make sure that your your hand on your breast is not too close to your areola or to your nipple because you don't wanna break that seal or that suction once your baby latches on. But you can use that hand to guide your nipple and your areola into baby's mouth and bring their head to you. So always bring baby to breast. Don't try and lean over and bring your breast to baby. This is really uncomfortable. I see so many moms doing this. Always bring baby to breast, not the other way around. 
and you can help guide that into the baby's mouth and this is a great way to really be able to see and make sure that baby is getting a good latch. The next position I'm going to talk to you about is a laid back hold. You don't need a breastfeeding pillow for this one. It's really a great position because you can just kind of lay back. For this position, you're laying back and you could be in your bed or on the sofa and you just lay back and you let your baby latch just like this as you're laying back on a decent incline. You could be reclined even further than I am. And this is just a relaxing position and some moms really like it. It might be uncomfortable for any moms who have had a C-section or abdominal trauma, but this is a really nice position to try as well. The next position I'm gonna to talk to you about is side lying hold. This is simply just lying on your side. This is great for nighttime nursing sessions when you're getting baby out of the bassinet or crib and you can actually nurse your baby in the bed. Now it's not safe to sleep with baby in the bed, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that baby is in the same room as you, but not bed sharing. But this is a great way to nurse your baby and it can be comfortable for you. And remember each one of these positions, it provides more stimulation on certain areas of the nipple. So for you first time mamas who breastfeeding is just uncomfortable and you're having that sensitivity and it just takes time for your nipples to get used to it, it can be really helpful to not just do one position repeatedly, but rather to try these different positions at different times. That way it decreases crack nipples and nipple discomfort. So anyway, this side lying position is you just simply are laying on your side on bed or on the sofa and you just take baby right up to the nipple and you just latch them while you're laying on your side they're latched and this is a great way to nurse your baby as well now that we went over some of the breastfeeding positions I want to talk to you about the type of environment you want to be in when you're breastfeeding you're going to want to create a calm environment with not a lot of external stimuli you want soft lights low noises and to make sure that you're in a comfortable area it can be really helpful to hold your baby skin to skin, which is your baby down to their diaper with their bare chest and belly to your bare chest and belly. This has been shown through many studies to actually help increase milk production and bonding between mom and baby. If your baby is swaddled, make sure to unswaddle them before beginning to breastfeed them. Make sure your baby's arms are free and unswaddled because this actually helps them find the breast. Imagine if your arms were swaddled when trying to eat a meal. It just wouldn't be comfortable. So think about this when nursing your baby. You want to make sure to position your baby tummy to tummy. Again, their tummy should always be facing your tummy. Your tummy always faces your food. Think about how when you're eating, it would be really difficult if your head was turned away from your stomach or the front of you and was facing the opposite direction of that sandwich that you were trying to eat. It would be really uncomfortable and difficult so this wouldn't be something you would do. Your baby's body should be aligned when they're breastfeeding, their head should be at the breast, their nose should be at the nipple, and their head and shoulders and legs all in one line. Bring your baby to your breast. Don't be leaning over or trying to bring your breast to your baby. This is really uncomfortable and will make breastfeeding even more challenging for you and make it harder to get that good deep latch. Always bring baby to breast. Another great tip for you is to stimulate the skin between your baby's nose and mouth, which is this area right here. You can gently wipe your nipple in this area to stimulate a deep latch and a wide open mouth. Once you see that wide open mouth, put your baby right to the breast. It also can be really helpful to compress your breast to help your baby if they are struggling to open their mouth wide enough. Think of it like when you're eating a big burger or sandwich, how you would push down on the bun as you go to take a bite. You want your hands in a C shape from the side or underneath, but just make sure not to place your hands in the way of baby or too close to your areola, which will break that latch. So you just take your breast and you make a nice C shape with your hands and you compress the breast down to help fit it into baby's mouth. So again, like we talked about, some of those positions such as cradle and cross cradle are great because you can use your hand to grab your breast and compress it down and then you take your other hand and you put baby right to breast. Check for nicely flanged lips. They look like a fish's lips which means they will look nice and pluckered around that areola. 
both lips will be flanged out. And if you see that bottom lip tucked in, you can just gently rub or tug the chin and that bottom lip should pop right out if latched properly. You also want to make sure that your baby's bottom is supported and nice and close to you. So when your baby's bottom is brought in and closer to you, their nose is able to not be pushed up against your chest and this actually allows them to be able to breathe better. Never just pull baby off the breast if you feel like you have a bad latch. Ouch, that would hurt. Always just gently take your pinky finger and sort of put it right under a baby's lip or in the corner of their mouth sort of like a fish hook to break that seal before you unlatch them. If you're a first time mom and you're just not used to all this stimulation on your nipples and you're just not really sure if you have a bad latch or if it's just your nipples and your skin getting used to this whole breastfeeding process and all this stimulation that comes with it, I recommend waiting at least 30 to 60 seconds into your nursing session to see if that pain subsides. You can do some deep breathing techniques during this time, some nice deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out my other video on surviving cluster feedings, frequent feedings, and those first weeks of breastfeeding. I think it could be really helpful for you and I talk about some different products and different techniques to help you get through it. If this pain subsides after that first 30 to 60 seconds of your nursing session, then it sounds like you actually have a great latch. And this is just gonna take some time for your body to get used to breastfeeding. And I promise mama, it is so worth it. It is so worth all of the struggle and the first weeks for that bonding and amazing benefits you're giving your baby. What was really helpful for me was again, taking those nice deep breaths in through the nose, and out through the mouth during that initial latching and first few minutes of breastfeeding. And if you're still struggling with all the frequent nursing and cluster feedings, again, make sure to check out my video on surviving cluster feedings to help you get through this difficult time. I hope this video was helpful and gives you the confidence to continue your breastfeeding journey and try again. Sometimes it just takes practice. It can even take a few sessions, a few days, or a few weeks to get this whole breastfeeding thing down and practice that good latch. But I promise you in the end, it's worth it. It's so worth it for you, for your baby, and for the bond it will create between the two of you. It really does get easier with time, but I know how difficult and challenging those first weeks can be. No matter how long you breastfeed for, you should be so incredibly proud of yourself. You are doing an amazing job. Make sure to comment down below if you have any questions for me. I love to hear from you and I wanna make sure I'm helping you as best as I can throughout your breastfeeding and parenthood journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and thank you so much for your time today and support. I hope to see you in the next video.